Michael Ketting is CEO and founder of Hoop.me, uh, a new app that claims to kick Facebook into study mode. Let's talk to him. Let's just jump right into it. Okay. All right. Uh, first off, nice to actually be able to talk to you in more than 140 characters at a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Hoot.me, uh, what actually got you started? What made you decide that you wanted to build this company? Yeah, so actually, my whole team were, were college students, so we were literally up one night, stuck on calculus homework, and it was one of those big seminar classes where there's several hundred people in each section. So, you know, we, when we were stuck on this problem, I said, there's got to be another hundred people working on this problem right now. I know most of them, if not all of them, are on Facebook right now, too. I just wish I could see who they are so I could reach out to them and get some help. Uh, or be able to talk to my TA over Facebook or something like that, so I wouldn't have to wait until office hours the next day, you know, because the assignment was due at like 2 a.m. in the morning. So that's where we kind of said, well, hey, what what if we built something like this? What if we went out and created a knowledge network, if you will? And that's when we said, okay, let's go do business plan competition around the idea, maybe get a little bit of traction. But um, once we ended up building out the prototype. We, we got a lot of attention, and from there we kind of realized that you know, we might be able to actually build a company out of this, which is when we took it to the next level and ended up moving to New York City this summer to join DreamIt and uh, ended up building, building the real product there. Was it really that fast, like from just a conception of idea to let's just start building this, or did you kind of like shop the idea around, tell them like, hey go to a few people that you trust, like, is this crazy? Am I insane? Or is this actually, am I onto something? Oh, yeah, no, there was a ton of validation. Because when we originally came up with the idea, we were just going to do a business plan competition with it. So in order to even do that, we had to do all sorts of market validation. I had, I, I wrote, we wrote a 30-page business plan before we even put any code to paper, which is probably not how too many startups get going now. But we uh, so we we vetted the idea very heavily before we even started, and it, it was a couple months later before the idea uh, even started to take shape and, and code. Well, that's a pretty different experience than anything I've ever had. Uh, <laughs> well, was it this? Uh, Discur was not my first little business venture, and in e each case, I never wrote up a business plan. I just kind of jumped straight in both feet and hopefully I sink or swim one success so far one failure uh, not so bad by my uh, by my accounts <laughs> not bad at all okay. um, but anyway uh, you took part in something called three days startup correct okay uh, what exactly is that and like how does that work yeah so okay so going back kind of to square one you're you're peeling apart the pieces here. So Square One came up with the idea, sitting up late one night doing homework. Then we did a bunch of research around the idea and thought, okay, we could do a business plan competition. Well, the business plan competition, this was actually about this time last year. So the business plan competition wasn't until December, wasn't until the second semester. So we said, okay, let's, let's keep building out this idea and let's go take it to this deal called three day startup. Well, three day startup is a lot like one week in startup. One week in startup's been become very popular, especially up in the up in the northeast. And what three day startup is is you go in and on Friday night, you pitch an idea. You, know, you have forty participants come together and it's typically forty uh, here it's a lot it's forty students from from the University of Texas typically. Some industry folks come in, but you know, we see MBAs, we see computer science uh, majors, we see BBAs and some marketing PR majors. So everybody comes together. Generally, everybody has their own idea. So what they do is they break us out into uh, groups, you know, breakout rooms, and you have to hash your ideas out among those groups. Well, from those groups, only the 10 or 12 best ideas get to get pitched to the entire group later on in, in the night. So, you know, we were one of the 10 groups. Our idea was in that, in that set, made it to the finals. And then from there, once we actually pitched, we ended up getting selected by the group to become one of the two or three companies to actually get developed through the weekend. So 
you know, from Friday night from idea selection, you've got from Friday until Sunday afternoon to bring a product to life because they bring in venture capitalists and some people from the Austin startup community to come in and see it, you know, and see what's, uh, you know, where, where your idea is and where it's going. So that was kind of stage one. That was when we realized, okay, this might actually work. So from there, that's when we built out a prototype, continued building out the prototype, you know, better the demo. And we took that to Miami, Florida at Startup Camp, where we got on stage with five other companies and pitched our idea in February. And we ended up winning that competition. So that's, that's when we said, okay, not only is this a good idea, but it might actually, might actually be able to take it into a full-time company here. So uh, that's when we got into Dream Adventures. That's when we joined the, the Dream It portfolio class up in New York. So that's kind of the, the long story. All right. uh, you mentioned uh, prototyping it up and building out over a bit of time. Do you actually program, or did you get there is a, your friends that do the programming, and you're just kind of the person directing the vision, directing the product? Yes, yeah, so I, I handle business development. I hardly write any code. Uh, that we, we have a team of two other guys, Sid Apadiai and Gaurav Singhani, and Sid was was – one of my good friends in business school at Texas that I met, he probably never should have been a business major, should have been a computer science major because that's kind of where his heart lies. But uh, he wanted to go through the business stuff and understand it, and he's very savvy on the business end as well. So partnered up with him, pitched the idea. Uh, he laughed at me originally before we went into three-day startup, but uh, ended, up, ended up saying, hey, we might be able to do something with it. So he and I took it into three-day startup. Uh, about at that time, Sid also said, you know, hey, if, if we're going to do this, let me bring on the guy who beats me at all the hackathons. So he brought on his lifelong friend, Gorob, and uh, the, the core team, uh, that's what we've used to really kind of build the product. We, we brought on another intern this summer, but um, the, the three of us have, uh, have kind of made up the core team. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Uh, so you're a business major. Is, is that it? Or degree holder? I don't know. What, what was that? Are you a business major or degree holder now? No, major. major. I'm not a degree holder. So the average age on our team is 20 years old. I'm, I'm 21. So oh, we're uh, very we're young. young. Very young, yeah. <laughs> um, so you got, you have your university involved in, uh, in Hoot.me? Yeah, so we're, we're not going to the university levels just because from a philosophical level, we don't like the enterprise bulky model of going and, and selling to these schools from the top down. Instead, we really want to drive this from the bottom up, where we come in and we say, okay, we want the students and the teachers to adopt this technology on an unofficial basis and then go from there. So that's what we're doing right now. We're, we've got uh, campus managers, what we call on, on several university campuses, and they're out there really trying to use the social media and kind of grassroots marketing efforts to bring teachers and students on there. So um, everything's been good. It's up and to the right, which is um, all we could ask for. Definitely. Um, your business model, it's pretty interesting. Um, when I first read about it, the, only thing, the first thing that I thought of was it's kind of like the freemium model that you see for video games, uh, on like iOS or whatever, uh, but it's being applied to education. Um what made you decide to go that route of uh, having people sell their time as a tutor okay, uh, instead of going some, with some other kind of monetization? Yeah, so I mean right now the peer-to-peer the -peer side is all we have. So it's that freemium model where just friends work with each other on the site. But you're right, pretty soon we are going to introduce that, that paid, that tutoring side. And how exactly everything's going to react on that, a lot of it we're just going to have to see. But much of the emphasis on that just comes from the research and what we know about there being a demand for tutoring and about it being a model that we've experienced as students ourselves that really probably should be disrupted by technology. I mean, there's no reason, for example, if I'm, if I'm stuck on, on calculus, let's go back to that example, if I'm stuck on calculus, Chances are, and, and actually true story, I didn't know that night that I was going to be stuck on that problem. You know, if I had known, I might have tried booking a tutoring session through the school or with the TA or whatever prior to starting that homework, so I could have gotten a little bit of guidance on that question. Second, 
I didn't need an entire hour's worth of help on that. I was just stuck on, on something minor in there. I'd, I'd missed a negative or misconfigured something in the, in the process. So I just needed somebody to step over my shoulder and say, hey, and, you know, another pair of eyes, hey, you missed this. Don't forget about this rule and go from there. So from, from those kind of two points, that's where we said, okay, this is where technology and, and the long tail effect and the long tail velocity can really play out here and really make a difference. I could come in and ask for a tutor right now and only get a bite-sized session from them at a much lower price than I would have paid for a tutor elsewhere. So I can get a 20-minute slice for uh, you know basically instantaneous. That's where we came in and kind of said, okay, this is, this is something that, that, that needs to be done, which is why we're going to do it. All right. This might be kind of a, a tricky question. Um, what kind of data do you collect from your users? And are there any plans to anonymize that data to sell? Because you're getting a lot of demographic data. You're getting a prime uh, demographic that marketers want to sell to. And you're figuring out all kinds of stuff about them, like, what what region they're in, what type of uh, subjects they're studying. That's a lot of really good information that someone might be tempted to sell anonymous or not anonymous. Is that something that you're looking into? Not right now. No, not right now. You have to remember that we're kind of, uh, we're, we're, we're two steps removed from our user's initial point of information sharing because all the data that we get is from Facebook and we're not collecting every component of data from the Facebook graph. We're only taking stuff that's important to us like uh, what school you go to and you know your profile picture so we can populate something on the app. So you're right about there being an opportunity there, but as far as capitalizing on that opportunity right now, it's it's not it's not a huge concern. Uh, it'd be great, you know, if we could start creating some sort of uh, metric for for seasonality behind subjects. It'd be great if we could start forecasting when students have problems in particular subject areas, when calculus seems to be studied most, those types of things. Yeah, that, that would be great, but on an individual user level, yeah, you know, we we have some philosophical things about protecting protecting our users' information. Right. Just have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> the name Hootme, Hoot.me. Where did that come from? Because when Everything that I start, it's such a pain to get a name. Everyone's camping out some of the best names, uh, domains, and it took me forever to get Discur when I got it, and I'm holding on to it for dear life, even if I don't build a product around it because I just like the name. I must have went through like seven different other names before I landed on that one. What made you get to Hoot.me? So that is completely a byproduct of three-day startup. We, we were calling ourselves something totally different when we went into the program. And as, okay. as the nights progressed, we, uh, people started calling us Hoot for whatever reason. So anytime we'd have a breakthrough in the code, people would chant Hoot. And from there, it just stuck. So we left the program and said, you know what? That, that had a lot of catch to it. So we, we ran with it. And the, the Hoot Me domain was... Uh, what was available, you know, we were able to secure it, so and uh, we just ran with it. Well, that, that's lucky because I, I had nobody shouting out any names, and I thought I really doubt any of them would have shouted out Disker at any, at any time. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I think some of it. I mean, some of it did come from that correlation between that the owl, the motif, and education, and being night owl stuck on on homework, but uh, also we wanted to preserve kind of the, the idea of the, the light bulb and, you know, idea generation, if you will, which is kind of why our logo looks like a light bulb and an owl together. So, Which came first, the, the owl or the hoot? <laughs> <laughs> it was, I, you know, that's actually, that's actually a good question. I don't remember. I, the, I think the light bulb came first, and then the, the owl motif is kind of what played out through three-day startup, probably because we were all kind of night owls through that program as well. I mean, we, we hardly slept, so anyway, it, was, it was a fun story. Oh, um, so is this, I mean, I know you guys are just starting out, but is this going to be, is there any other projects that you are thinking about just like sitting in the back of your head that are like, 
man, it'd be really cool if I could do that. Okay, at some point, just like an idea for another a future product or future uh, company or something like that? You know, I, I think we've become addicted to entrepreneurialism and addicted to the startup scene. So our, our minds are, are running all the time. But it, it's hard to think about too many future deals when we've got such an exciting thing on our hands right now. So it's, it's at the point where we're, we're dreaming about it. We wake up in the middle of the night and text each other, you know, hey, I have this idea. So right, right now everything is, uh, is very <laughs> food focused. But yeah, I mean, we definitely have ideas that we'll joke with each other and say, okay, you know, later. Uh, it's never enough time in the day. <laughs> Uh, That's one thing. I, I wish we didn't have to stop sometimes for for food or sleep. We've uh, we've joked about that. Yeah. Um, what kind of stuff can we expect from uh, Hootami? Like, is there any new exciting features on the horizon that like that you're not telling anyone about? <laughs> so Maybe. because I mean, because you already got some pretty cool stuff. I mean, you got uh, you got video chat built into it. Video conferencing and supports up to how many people at a time? Eight right now. Eight. We can go a little bit higher, but we're capping it at eight. At eight. Uh, screen sharing is there or it's on the way? It's on the way. So that's one of the things that we've talked about that, that is in the pipeline here. Uh, should, should be coming out pretty soon. But um, as far as a couple other things go, yeah, we, we do have some things going on right now that we're building and, and should be releasing here pretty soon. And more, uh, most of it right now is, is on the peer to peer side. We're just trying to optimize that experience. So, based on how we're seeing study sessions play out, we see a lot of teachers come in there. A lot of students create study sessions specifically around their class. So, it's not necessarily a study session around homework two on the math tonight. It's a study session around my math class, and they want to keep the entire discussion ongoing. And I guess the thinking behind the users is well, if I've got every homework assignment aggregated in this study session, then when it comes exam time, I can scroll up and I can see kind of the things that we had problems with as far as the, from a class standpoint. So some of the features that we're rolling out are going to tailor a bit more to that. We're actually, we're actually really excited about what we have in the pipeline uh, that, that kind of makes that entire experience for these longer study sessions much better, organizes the feed much better. So I'll, uh, I'll definitely let you know when, when that's about to roll out. All right, very cool. You guys uh, have want and promote having teachers uh, get involved with your service, so it's not uh, strictly peer to peer. Okay, it's you're also having uh, basically people who are professed experts at their field uh, coming in to answer questions or help give advice uh, when they need to. Do teachers get a different type of account? Like, do they mark themselves as I'm a teacher and therefore they get more privileges than a student or, or different privileges? So you may see that a little bit later when we, when we start rolling out the, the tutoring side. But right now, no. The interface that the teachers get is exactly the same as, as the students. But see, the, the benefit for the teachers coming into our app as opposed to anything they could do on, on Facebook per se is they don't have to be friends with their students. So if you go into the study sessions, you can either leave them completely open and have them go out into the general Hoot community, or you can make them private. So if you can imagine if your teacher, like Miss Johnson's English class, you can make a private study session, and you don't have to be Facebook friends with your class because these links that we have, you could share with, with all the students via email in the class through whatever LMS system you use, be it Blackboard or, or whatever else. So you can send that link out to all your students and only the kids who have that link can come into the study session and you have kind of a, an entirely separate experience in the Hoot app that's, that's completely separate, segregated from the, the social dynamics, uh, you know, the social, the social network ties in there. So that, that's kind of one of the things that we've really done to try to cater towards the teachers and you know we go after teachers and students both both with the same degree of effort but but we feel teachers are important because they are without question the number one influencers in the students lives and, and in the schools I don't know if you, you've had the chance to catch Education Nation this week on NBC and MSNBC but they've been doing a, a whole lot to really cover and, and draw the teachers together. And it's you know funny whenever anything goes on in education, whenever people talk about how we're going to change and innovate education. 
sometimes the, the first people they go to are the teachers, and uh, it, it, it's important. But teacher, you know, teachers should 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 be there, but students should also be addressed in these situations. Um, is, you mentioned something uh, about having to send a, a link out so anyone with the link can get in and join that study group. Is that the only way to find, like, let's say, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm antisocial, I don't know anyone in my class, I'm not friends with anyone, and... Uh, let's say that class has made it particularly difficult for a student who starts a study group to get the emails of the other students in that class. Is there a way for that student to still find his class in the service? Yeah, so, you know, as long as, long as somebody didn't set the session as, as private, assuming they made it public, which is really what we try to try to encourage because we, we want that transparency and that information flow. So, yeah, yeah. So the student, based on the Facebook information that we pull, we know what school they come from. So we, we can guide them towards study sessions that are occurring from that school. And um, that, that, so, you know, a kid, even if they didn't get a direct invite to a study session, would probably see a node pop up or something in their news feed that would say, hey, here's a study session around around your English class or around your math class. So yeah, that, that's definitely fun. Well, that, that's one of the things that you're going to see change on the site in, in the coming coming week or two. You're going to see it be more focused around the school that you attend. We left the site very open throughout the summer and kind of the, the early weeks just because we wanted people to, to get a feel for it and be able to see that there's activity and engage with each other. But now that the school's... Uh, well, well underway. We're, we're now a couple weeks in for most of the nation and exams are starting to come up. What we're going to be doing is, is ratcheting it down so that the study sessions that you see are really only the ones that, that are relevant for, for you. Have, um, have you considered, okay, and maybe if this doesn't fit in with your product, uh, uh, but maybe, maybe it does, I don't know, but have you thought of maybe Having it set up so that I can re get in there and register. I'm in this particular class. Anything that's uh, pertaining to that class, any study groups, I want to be alerted to it just in case. Okay, so that's like I don't actually have to actively even go out and seek it out. Because what if I miss that one thing or someone tags something weird and I just I didn't really realize? Oh, that was that was pertinent. <laughs> yeah, you're you're peeling open our our product pipeline. Which, which is good. If you're, if you're thinking it, it means we, we've got good stuff in the, in the track. But yeah, that, that's coming. Okay. Because uh, that's kind of what we were doing at this store. You would search, oh, we would build kind of a little quick little database of classes. And you'd sign up and just get everything like a, like a floodgate. Mm -hmm. But that became messy after a little while. Uh, uh, we won't. We won't quite be like a floodgate. We'll try to make it more like a like a sniper. But. <laughs> well, there you go. You have you have already a bigger team than I had, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you'll probably be able to tackle that a lot easier than I did. <laughs> um, we'll see. How about you? What What are your plans moving forward? Uh, me uh, right now, I have uh, I have a brick and mortar business. Uh, that kind of keeps me funded. Um, as far as software goes, uh, no immediate plans. Uh, a couple ideas tossed around in my head, but nothing that I've felt passionate about. Uh, right now, I'm just basically sticking with Recap Attack, uh, trying to build that out. It's gotten moderate local success uh, as podcast and new site it's kind of hard to keep up since I'm the only one writing for it I had two other writers but they're busy with their lives and it's hard it's hard to get writers to uh, to work when you can't pay them <laughs> I just don't have it have the resources for that yet so it's right now uh, I'm trying to do the hard sell of getting people to give up their time for the dream that this could be something really cool and let's build this together and it, it for a lot of people that's just a hard pill to swallow but that that's what i'm doing cool no that's good stuff that's good stuff and 
I, I like the fact that, that you originally play with Disker in the education space because uh, we, we'd love to see a lot more momentum. And I, I think momentum is building up right now in the, in the ed tech space. But the more companies that kind of come at it, the, the better it's going to get. And uh, the space certainly needs it right now. Definitely. I mean, I agree 100%. Uh, it's just, it's, I think you guys are, are tackling it the best way possible because it's really hard. Like when I was showing off Discur to a few people, the biggest thing I got is I don't think anyone's going to sign up for another service. Okay, because originally mine wasn't an app built on top of Facebook like yours is. That was something that I had planned to do to make it to power with Facebook Connect so you could just log in with your Facebook account and we'd pull the necessary information. But it, you had to go to a separate site. It wasn't built in and integrated right into the service. And that was, in retrospect, a big mistake on my part. And I think you guys are doing it way better than anything that I had imagined. So. We hope so. You'd be surprised though. We still face obstacles with, with Facebook being blocked on on school campuses and stuff, and uh, <laughs> that's just something we're fighting fighting through and trying to encourage teachers and stuff to realize that that there's real power in, in Twitter and Facebook, and and that these kids are going to be exposed to these things when they walk out the classroom door. So we better start training them now how to really harness them for for the good and for the better. So. It's a lot, lot to be done in education, but uh, good th things are happening. Definitely. Um, we're almost out of time, so I just have a quick question, uh, or just a couple quick questions. Um, last week, there was, Facebook had its big conference, as you know, and they released sure. uh, a few cool features. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they uh, did. Um, are you guys going to implement that? Like, am I going to be seeing my friends who are still in school Am I going to be constantly getting ticker updates from them saying, hey, I'm studying in this class or whatever? Like uh, they have the new read, watch, listen, whatever. Is there going to be like a study button? <laughs> I'm doing this right now. We'll see, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I don't think we'd object. <laughs> well, I, no, it's more exposure for you. <laughs> um, we'll see. Is there any piece of advice you would give to a would-be entrepreneur? I think one of the biggest lessons that, that we learned this summer, we, we were exposed to a lot of great mentorship and a lot of great advice. And I think that that's something that, that's a blessing of the startup community in and of itself right now is that there's a lot of information flowing. But, but with all that information comes the, the responsibility and the challenge of being able to pick through and select what to listen to. Because there's there's so many tiers of advice, and oftentimes that that advice depends on the circumstance. I, I, one of the things that I would say is, you know, you've got ninety percent of the advice that comes after you is is circumstantial, including that statistic. You know what I mean? Right. So <laughs> if you if, if for any entrepreneur going into the space, I think the biggest thing is learning how to parse through that and figure out what's actually relevant to them, and that that's something we struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis, but having that gift and having that ability is, is critical. All right. Uh, uh, I think that will we'll stop there. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for the, doing the interview. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and I look forward, I look forward to seeing who, uh, who that grow and, uh, whatever other projects you get involved with later in the future. Uh, I hope none of them are similar to mine. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, so so people can find can go to hoot.me if they want to find out more about the app. They can uh, look up hoot.me in Facebook. Yeah, just yeah, just hoot.me. Click on get started. That will take you straight to the app. You can also find us through Facebook. Okay, and uh, they can follow you at Twitter uh, at the hoot.me. Correct. Right. Uh, that's it. Once again, uh, Michael, thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, keep in touch. Okay. Yeah, yeah please do. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Take care. Later. Bye-bye.